sisters and uh, brothers who are the propagators of Islam, who are scholars and imams in the scripture and in the religion. I am one of you, so we shall be speaking like a family. I'm not an outsider. I am within the Islamic community, within the scholars of the scripture, within the people who want to convey Allah's messages to the people. As the MC has said, I am here to share with you my experience as a scholar, an imam, a propagator of Islam. So that from the points that you will be jotting, you will be able to see how your being an Islamic scholar, a proper data of Islam, will not inhibit your endeavor as a business person who can earn a means of sustenance without necessarily depending on congregants to be able to make ends meet. So that is the import of this presentation. And this presentation is very easy because if all presentations are going to be that you come and relate your experience, you don't need to make any research, you don't Google anything, you don't read any book to get any, 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 any detail. You are speaking from your heart, relating what has happened. That presentation is very easy. I think this is the best lecture I've ever presented. M making this the second presentation. There was another one in Abuja. And this is the second. And, and I think this will contain more details, maybe, than the first presentation, which was the, done to the similar set of people in Abuja. And the MC has been very explicit. And of course, the, the topic for the discussion is to make us think, as I have said earlier, of how we can start our own businesses. Maybe the church has a different system whereby to some extent, some of the activities are more of a venture that brings in money. So the pastor is well paid, 
or pays himself from what the flock bring. Trainings are organized. Handsome remunerations are given to whoever participates in the growth of the church or the movement and so on. In Islam, we had something similar. I say had. Where the society looked after the Imam and what happens within his office. The people he teaches, the prayers offered, and so on. So since the Imam gives his entire life to the people, the people make sure that he does not lack anything. But that does not stop us from being like Osman ibn Affan. whereby they were companions of the Prophet, listening to him, learning and imparting knowledge. And at the same time, when there was any need to support Islam with their person and their possessions, they were also there. I will relate what I have done as a business person. and as a propagator of Islam so that maybe the participants may learn one or two things from what we went through. When we came to Abuja, about 30 years ago, There are very few scholars in town. Very few. So we were the scholars, or among the scholars, in spite of our lack of adequate scholarship. We were the radio program presenters, television presenters on Islam, public lectures, symposia, and so on. And that exposed us to a lot of people and to the society. And everybody was and is aiming at Abuja or planning to come to Abuja. We did not allow the fact that Everybody knew us to make us relent and to go after contracts in government offices. We could have done so. Some people that were less, less exposed, less famous, did that and they got a lot of money. But a scholar has a limit that he must not exceed. And that is what Al-Bibi is planning to do by this type of gathering. Self-esteem 
self-respect that can only come when you have a means of livelihood. When you are not a beggar. A beggar propagator will not convey the messages of Allah. Look at the Quran very well. وَمَا سَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَجْلِ What I am conveying unto you, it's not a ploy to get anything from you. I'm not asking for any recompense for what I'm doing. Only then will a scholar succeed. So, what do we do? You are in Abuja and you don't want to do anything but to fend for yourself. We started the only Tahfiz al Quran, Madrasa to Tahfiz al Quran in Abuja. Then there was no other school. And we sought and got people who memorized the Quran. And we started that school. And we said each pupil will pay 5,000 naira per term. And there was a lot of noise and complaints. How can you start a Quran in school and you are making people to pay? So at times when you are set on doing something, you must at the same time have that thick blood or thick skin 